Good morning. We offer our Mass together this morning for Anne S. Baker and for Thomas Rea. And let us begin as we begin all our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You are sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the Virgin Saint Angela never fail to commend us to your compassion, O Lord, that following the lessons of her charity and prudence, we may hold fast to your teaching and express it in what we do through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every priest stands daily at his ministry, offering frequently those same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But this one offered one sacrifice for sins and took his seat forever at the right hand of God. Now he waits until his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering he has made perfect forever those who are being consecrated. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us. For after saying, this is the covenant I will establish with them for those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them upon their minds. He also says, their sins and their evil doing I will remember no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer offering for sin. The word of the Lord. Response to our psalm. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. In the Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. The Lord has sworn, and he will not re repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are the priest.
Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. The seed is the word of God. Christ is the sower. All who come to him will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On another occasion, Jesus began to teach by the sea. A very large crowd gathered around him. So then he got into a boat on the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on land. And he taught them at length in parables. And in the course of his instruction, he said to them, hear this. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground where it had little soil. It sprang up at once because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it produced no grain. And some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit. It came up and grew and yielded 30, 60, and a hundredfold. He added, whoever has ears ought to hear. And when he was alone, those present along with the 12 questioned him about the parables. He answered them, the mystery of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to those outside, everything comes in parables so that they may look and see, but not perceive, and hear and listen, but do not understand, in order that they may be converted and be forgiven. Jesus said to them, do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand any of the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes at once and takes the way away the word sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, who when they hear the word, receive it at once with joy. But they have no roots. They last only for a time. Then when tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Those sown among thorns are another sort. They are the people who hear the word, but worldly anxiety, the lure of riches, and the craving for other things intrude and choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But those sown on rich soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it, and bear fruit thirty and sixty and a hundredfold the Gospel of the Lord. Over the years, I've uh, preached in many venues from Alaska to Florida, Colorado. Um, I even once preached uh, to a group of American bishops on a, in a boat uh, on the Sea of Galilee. But I've never preached in a fishing boat off shore to people on shore. And I think that must have been pretty difficult because in the days of Jesus, there were no megaphones. So the people had to really want to hear what he was saying. And he must have really projected very well. But I think this parable was a good one to use as he was preaching to the people on shore because they could kind of ask themselves, which were they? You know, the good ground, the rocky ground, the thorny ground, who were they? And I think that's one way of looking at the parable for all of us, to try to ask ourselves, which of these do we fit into? You know, does the word of God just last for a while, you know, and then we get caught up in so many other things whether it's cultural or social or political things 
that just distract us from the Word of God? Or do our, uh, when the Word of God has come to us, does it really have deep roots? You know, that nothing can really shake it. And I think it is interesting, you know, to read all of those things and, and find out uh, where we really stand. And it's pretty important because uh, Jesus told this parable. He doesn't tell parables just for the sake of telling parables. He wants us to listen and understand. I think there's another way of looking at this parable also, and I think it might be uh, on, in the terms of the preacher, how they should look at this parable. In other words, I think it's important for the preacher, whoever it is, to understand to a certain degree what his congregation or where they're at. You know, where they are at, preaching, you know, not to something that totally goes over their head, but something where they're at. What kind of soil are most of the uh, people in the congregation? And I think that's important. So there's two ways of looking at this parable. I think uh, from the perspective of we look at where we are, who we are in terms of uh, whether we're good soil or bad soil or rocky soil or just terrible soil or, or from the point of the point of view of the of the preacher you know where are the people that you are preaching to With confidence in God's mercy, we present our needs and those of the world to our loving Father. For the gift of unity in the church, that God's law of love and forgiveness may be in our minds and written upon our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace in our hearts, our homes, and our world. We, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have asked for our prayers, and for those in special need of prayers, that Jesus may restore what is withered in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, that they may find comfort and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ann Baker and Thomas Rafe, whom we remember in a special way during this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line, the intentions in the prayer, parish prayer boxes and our own special intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our And for the continued healing of Father Michael, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Loving Father, we offer all these prayers through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Who 
humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord. In him, you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the Eucharistic offerings of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Michael and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Frank, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen for graciously to the prayers of this family you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always safely offer each other a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof, but only say the word, 
my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another.